Well, we got to show some love to the Eagles, though, and Jalen Hurts specifically. Let's have a listen yeah. to Jalen Hurts about how he has transformed from a rookie season that was rocky to a second season that showed promise to a third season that has him in line to get paid a hell of a lot of money by the Eagles. Let's have a listen to Jalen Hurts. Well, my, my first year here, I mean, I, they probably didn't even want to draft me here. You know, it's probably one of those things, but it, it always handled itself. You said a little bit ago they probably never wanted to draft me here. Did you mean the front office, the fans? Explain that. I mean, I know, um, you know, there was a, a big surprise to many. A big surprise to many. But my favorite verse, um, you know, I went through a lot of stuff in college and it kind of stuck with me, John 13, 7. You may not know now, but later, later you'll understand. Hopefully people understand. How proud are you of, for handling the way you handled the championship game against Georgia? How proud of you of, for the way you handled that situation? Um, we got new moments, new moments and new times. You know, I think my character... I've been raised to be who I am, and I think as the times change, the character doesn't. So I always try and never get too high, never get too low, and I always give my best. This is going to be a challenge for the Eagles, though. There was an item yesterday from Ben Volan of the Boston Globe, and this is a talking point that pops up from time to time. You get quarterbacks on rookie deals, and three of the four quarterbacks playing yesterday on their rookie deals, low cap numbers, once you get a Joe Burrow on a second contract, a Jalen Hurts on a second contract, how do you construct it in a way that you have enough left over to put a team around the great quarterback? How do you do it? How do you fairly pay your quarterback what he has earned and what he deserves? How do you placate him? How do you have enough dollars left for everyone else? That's the moment from several years ago that caused Dak Prescott to give you the side eye before he finally got his four-year, $160 million contract. Well, now, now he's got the it, whole it is, team looking at him dynamic. the side eye, though. Now that he's got the whole team looking at him with the side eye, I will say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you've got to perform yeah. if you're going to have that. Exactly contract. right. That's, that's right. the key. Right. And that's – I'm not I'm – not, this isn't a knock on Dak, but you, you can't – You can't, can't play the way you did last field. week. You can't right. be inconsistent. Right. You you have to be Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And, and that's the reality. You know, Joe, I, I – when, when I saw that article, my first thought was, well, you know what? Joe Burrow is a guy that understands the value of having good players around him. I, I would trust Joe Burrow – to just figure out his own contract. Joe, just tell us what you want. <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously. Here, here, just take the checkbook. Right. You tell us what you want. You're right. a smart guy. You understand how this works. You know there's got to be money left for everyone else. And that's why I keep pushing this idea of giving the quarterback a percentage of the cap. I hear you. I've yet to hear a sound argument in response to the idea that you take a certain percentage every year. 12 cents on the dollar, 13 cents on the dollar, whatever it is goes to your quarterback, and the team has all the rest of it to go out and put the players around him. And the other side of it, too, is teams that don't recklessly trade away their draft picks have a nucleus of guys every year that are on their rookie deals, that are getting peanuts in comparison to your star high-end right. players. Right. It's on you as the team to draft and develop, draft and develop the young guys because for the first three years – we can't give you another contract. You may be an all pro every year. We can't do anything about it until you got your three years in. So it, it is still incumbent on the team to use those draft picks wisely, sign good quality undrafted free agents and put the players around your star quarterback. But you know, for some quarterbacks, the answer should be, we're not going to pay you. The Rams should have done that with Jared Goff three years ago. And they eventually paid for it uh, literally and figuratively by what they did with Jared Goff. Other teams need to be ready. And some guys are going to fall into that golf where maybe we shouldn't pay him. Yeah. But some guys, clearly, Joe Burrow, you don't have that. You don't say, well, we'll just go find another Joe Burrow in the draft. You pay Joe Burrow what he wants, and you trust that he's going to be fair with you to allow you to put a team around him. Yeah, well, hey, listen, either Burrow hurts, they're going to have to pay them a lot of money, right? We know that. I do think, to your point, you know, they're a little bit like Mahomes – or Josh Allen and the fact that they're not going to look to go like, oh, we, I just want to hammer the team and take every bit of cash they got. Uh, to what you said, I think you know Jalen Hurts is going to sit there and go, damn, 
I want to make sure A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard and Lane Johnson and everybody's here with me. Hey, that's part of it. And again, you know, what, what a better example. The guy that we all call the GOAT did that. And, yeah, maybe the, was forced to do a corner with the Patriots a little bit uh, as far as the money was concerned, but did it, and he, he reaped the rewards of it. He always had a good team around him, and he won seven dance Super Bowls. So there's something to be learn, learned there. But, I mean, Jalen Hurts, of course, you know, hey, I was wrong. Yeah, I, you know, questioned how good he was. Just, crap, he's definitely a top ten quarterback in football, what he's doing. He's one of the greatest leaders in the sport. You know, you could tell even right there, it doesn't even seem like he's happy he won the NFC Championship game. He seems like he's still, you know, like chippy and like, I, I'm going to prove you wrong still more there to it. I love that about him. I do. You know, and again, he's done a great job as far as leading the team, making big plays, running the football, doing that. And then the way they're playing is formulated around his skill set now uh, to where they got something special going here yesterday. I don't think he was 100% yesterday. I don't think his arm is totally there, but he was playing a really good defense. And like we said, I think they were being a little conservative too once that Brock Purdy injury happened. Um, but, you know, this time off, I think will be big for him to where he can be totally full go, feel totally normal for the Super Bowl and, and give that shoulder a little bit of a rest. Yeah, we want both starting quarterbacks to be as close to 100% as possible for the Super Bowl coming up in 13 days. And I think Jalen Hurts, that laser focus, not satisfied with simply getting to the Super Bowl, wants to get there and win it. And that leadership is so important. That's why, I, I, look, I understand that wins aren't apples to apples, quarterback stat like a pitcher would be. But there still is relevance to having a guy sure. that lifts up the team, yep. that leads the team, that inspires players, that holds them accountable, that gets them to do more than they otherwise would do. There is value in that. And Jalen Hurts has that. He has that. He told me that after they beat the Steelers. He's starting to feel this team take on his personality. He's the coach's son. He views it a certain way. He brings that to the table. And you combine that with the physical skill. You get a coach on the field that's got a high degree of physical skill, you got something special. That's right. And that's where the Eagles are. And that's why they, they will pay Jalen Hurts. I feel like the Eagles have always been kind of ambivalent. Always kind of looking, you know, they're, they've been linked to some of the guys that have been available, uh, you a know, lot. And, the last and there two may off have been seasons. A, there may there there may there may have been a point last off season when they were maybe kicking the tires on a guy named Kyler Murray. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, right. So you know, uh, but but that was before Jalen Hurts has this third year where he breaks out and becomes a guy where he's your guy. Yeah, there's that's no right. there's no doubt there's no doubt about it at this point. He's the guy you need to keep. He's the guy you need to rally around and. uh and I think he he can be as trusted as Joe Burrow to be reasonable when the time comes because he yeah. knows the value of having money available to take care of the rest of the team. Yeah. So the Eagles are in great shape. The Chiefs are in great shape. The Bengals are in great shape. I mean, look, we're, we're the, the Eagles were just here five years ago with a completely different team, yeah, right. but they still have the structure in place to constantly reload, and the Chiefs do too around Patrick Mahomes. It's Get get used to seeing these teams among the top in the NFL. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. And, 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 you know, again, not only because of the quarterback situations, but the people running the show behind the scenes. They got, a, they got a formula and a plan that they adhere to, and they have an eye of talent that is special. And they're not afraid to make the tactical aggressive move a little bit. Whether, you know, oh, hey, we're going to trade Tyree Kill away. Okay, he's awesome. Or we're going to trade and get A.J. Brown, whatever it may be. But they've done the things, too, that you've discussed where they've drafted and developed. They've been very good in those areas and then splashed in some free agents with it. And then you add that quarterback and a damn good head coach on both sides. That's where we're going to get an awesome Super Bowl. I, I hope it will be. And uh, the, the Eagles probably wish they weren't favored. Uh, they they, they want to have that chip on their shoulder, and and we'll we'll see what happens over the next thirteen days, how it goes, all the news and whatever comes out about how healthy Patrick Mahomes is or isn't, Jalen Hurts is or isn't, but hopefully it's a good, exciting game that isn't marred by any of the stuff that we've been talking about that uh, that that may have caused some problems if those calls had affected the outcome of the game. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.